Hi, I'm Rama Urganti, Tuck09 for Radio Tuck. It's my pleasure to be here with Tony Bates, Senior Vice President at Cisco Systems. Welcome, Mr. Bates. Thank you, Rama. Very nice to be here with all of you. Great. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, let me start off with a question about video. Uh, there's been a lot of buzz about web-based HD video streaming, and it seems like that takes up a lot of bandwidth, and it's not really accessible to the average home user at the present. What bottlenecks do you see, and how do you see that evolving? Yeah, let me, let me maybe just answer in a couple of ways to start with. I mean, video on the whole is clearly becoming the dominant traffic type of the internet. And uh, if anyone gets an opportunity, Cisco actually publishes a thing called the VNI, the Visual Networking Index, and it gives a lot of great data and, and, and statistics. We don't have time to go in today, but clearly we see that becoming increasingly more and more the dominant type of traffic. Uh, and I think part of the phenomena that happened was not only was video as a uh, entertainment medium, uh, we also start to see user-generated content, and maybe even the start of video as a communications technology more than just voice. Um, to answer your question, though, in terms of where are things going, obviously people want the best visual experience they can get. And today that really probably means high def or maybe even Blu-ray in the future. Uh, and we're starting to see a lot of the media companies uh, embrace the internet and add their content, um, sometimes freely, sometimes in a paid way, over the network. Uh, now, what we've learned from video from traditional broadcast systems is that when you move away from a broadcast network uh, and you move to more of a one-to-one -one type of opportunity, it clearly consumes a lot of bandwidth. Uh, high definition in particular is just a lot of bits to move around and to stream. And so where you talk about the bottlenecks, there's really a couple of places. One, I think the big service providers, the large telecom companies, have kind of embraced core networks. They're actually building out for the future their large-scale backbones. And that's good news, and, and companies like Cisco have been able to uh, build those types of products to scale. The next is the aggregation, so this is where you sort of meet in an NFL city. Uh, that's an area that I think still needs to be invested in, but the technology is there to do that. And there's technologies that can allow you to do things like not always send one-to-one uh, -one type of stream. There's multicast technologies, there's content distribution technologies. But the real bottleneck still kind of lies in the last mile, the access to the home. And as we think about uh, an average household that might want two or three HD streams, maybe a standard definition stream, the ability to do their high-speed broadband, maybe voice, you start to think about, um, even with compression technologies and the sophistication I talk about in the backbone, tens of megabits type service. So I think what we're going to have to see is more and more investment into fiber, deeper into the network, maybe all the way to the home. Very exciting for companies like Cisco, uh, but of course the business model needs to be there. This is clearly re regarding the home usage, right? What about the business usage? I, I've seen things like Cisco telepresence. Uh, where does Cisco see evolving, uh, you know, developments in that field? How do you think that's evolving? Yeah, in fact, um, it's a great question. Um, and just maybe I'll spend one minute on telepresence for, for the student body to understand. Telepresence is uh, what I would call a new form of, of multimedia communication. It's not video conferencing. What telepresence provides is the ability to have a one-touch uh, capability where I can immediately enter into a, an immersive experience where I get a 1080p, so a very high definition visual experience combined with a high definition audio experience. Now what we see in the enterprise, as you, as you mentioned, is a whole new form of collaboration. So people aren't just using it for the business to business um, meeting, the executive meeting, people are now using it in all forms of interaction. In my own organization, very large development organization spread around the world, you know, 2,000 people in India, uh, 500 people in Israel, and so on. I use it each and every day to collaborate with my teams. But where it's moving next is we're really going to move into a world where the enterprises can have to embrace all forms of video, not just from a communication, but perhaps for training. Uh, Cisco itself uses it for direct health care, so you can actually get uh, the ability to have remote diagnosis using telepresence. So the enterprise has to embrace a lot of the same scaling challenges we talked about with the consumer, as well as all those different formats, not only from capture, but how you do display. So there's a lot of exciting technologies we're developing in that area. Continuing on the video theme, um, how do you think about um, video from the commercial TV point of view? Things seem to be moving to the web, and we heard somebody from Google talk about uh, Mr. Desai talk about how, how they plan to move, how they see the move to the web from TV. Um, how do you see the balance of power there shifting, and how do you think companies like Cisco can leverage that or help that happen? So a couple of things I would say. One is um, there's been a lot of talk about uh, video moving to the web, 
Uh, and one of the things that we learned, we acquired Scientific Atlanta, as many of you know. And uh, when you look at high quality video across a number of channels, it's very clear to me that that, that video needs to be managed. You need a certain uh, quality of service, you need a certain service level. Because people have become very, uh, consumers in particular, have become very programmed to a unique high quality experience. You take the NFL or, or the World Cup or uh, um, you know, a, a test match between England and India. We expect a certain level. So one thing is that the internet evolves, so must the quality evolve. It's not just that it's free and there you can ex therefore you can accept a, a, a lower quality. Cisco is doing a lot of work in this area to do things like adaptation of the video quality. So an example is if you have a, a, a link that the quality is not very good, we can adapt the endpoint uh, and where the video is coming from to actually deal with those errors. And those things need to happen. So that's the technology side. The other side of it is nothing's free in this world. And we learned this, Cisco, um, perhaps in a difficult way when we announced voice would be free. And in some ways, voice has evolved to be a, a very well understood technology on the internet. But with all premium content, you need to pay for that. And I think the business models of the internet have not yet evolved to really understand how to make, take advantage of that. I'll give you a simple example. If I'm a subscriber of a cable company, I'm paying for the service, but I'm also paying for the right to access that content. I think a model might evolve where if I go to an over-the-top service, let's say Hulu, uh, in the US. If I subscribe and I pay for content uh, with my cable service like Time Warner Cable, then I should be able to get access to that same content through the Hulu service. But if I don't pay, then I probably shouldn't get access for that. And I think that might be a business model we start to see. So what it means is there'll be a melding of a traditional video business with an over-the-top business. And I think the consumers are looking for that. So is that the big trend you see in five years, so maybe 10 years? When do you think that's going to happen? I think it's sort of starting. Um, but I think the way it'll evolve is through sort of a hybrid approach. I mean, there's companies like DirecTV today that do broadcast on satellite and they do on-demand through broadband. And the quality discussion of broadcast versus on-demand is very different. It's probably OK to wait 30 seconds to start having your, your movie streamed. Uh, but I think the real big trend, if, if I may, is not really around just purely entertainment. I want to come back to the communication aspect. What communication is is different in the sense that it's a two-way interactive experience. And I believe that within five to ten years, when you think about social networking, you think about community and how that's changing the web, we're going to see a blurring of video and its usage within that. So not only will it be an entertainment mechanism both in terms of traditional and internet, it'll also become the way that we actually communicate. So instead of us sitting in this room doing this interview, we'll be able to perhaps watch some show, maybe even upload what we're doing at the same time and at the same time interact. That has a lot of implications, implications for endpoints. Cell phones, the camera's the wrong way around for a communications device, the camera's gonna be the other way around. Business models will change where the uplink service, the bandwidth into the network is maybe as important, if not more important, than the downlink as we have today. So very important, but I think communications, the transformation of communications is what I really see as the next big thing for video. Okay. Uh, taking a step further up from that, uh, how do you think the networking industry would do? This is very specific to video as part of networking. How do you think the networking industry overall would look in five, 10 years? Well, if you go back to this visual networking index, with video becoming the dominant traffic type, uh, in many ways, I think so will the network follow that evolution. So there's sort of three things that's going to happen. One is higher quality, better immersive experience with high bandwidth, and then more of this two-way interactive. So what that's going to mean is that if that's what the consumers want, and by the way, they also want that link to mobility, it's probably going to mean some shakeout in terms of the players in that market. Because the infrastructure needs to support this. And we're talking about large-scale consumers you know, in terms of the, the reach and the capability. So I think you're going to see some consolidation in the telecom landscape. And I also think that at some point we're going to have to work out uh, the content providers and the infrastructure providers. How does each of them make money? Because today there's a little bit of a battle with the over-the-top players saying, well, the network should be free, and the networking folks saying, well, I'm the one who's carrying all of this and negotiating the content rights. So I think you're going to see a lot more co-opetition. I don't know exactly how that plays out, but I think if you, you sort of stretch your mind a bit, you could imagine telecom companies owning media companies and media companies owning telecom companies. 